Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be reviewing for you the Lancome Taint Adol Ultra Wear Foundation. By the way, this is the sample size. Don't think that this is all you get. I know this is not a new foundation. It has been out for a while, but I've been so intrigued buy it recently. I am always on the lookout for new amazing foundations or just amazing foundations that I haven't discovered yet, that I haven't tried yet because I am just obsessed. I have a problem. I'm always trying to find better and better and better. I just can't be satisfied. This foundation is literally like the highest rated foundation across like every website I looked at. It has thousands of like five star ratings on Sephora. It is like the top rated foundation on like Debenhams, John Lewis, all of those websites where they sell lots of makeup. If it isn't the top of the top, it is in the top few foundations and it is like up there with like foundations that we all know are amazing and very, very popular like Estee Lauder Double Wear, like the Fenty Foundation, like the Armani Luminous Silk. Foundations that we all see and hear a huge amount about on YouTube. I have never seen this mentioned in a YouTube video and obviously it's not new. However, I have never heard or seen this mentioned by anyone on YouTube. I've never seen it used in a tutorial. I've never seen it mentioned in like Holy Grail or favorite foundations or best foundations ever. And I haven't even seen any reviews for it. I'm sure if you go back, 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 there are reviews from when it first came out because it's not a new foundation. So you wouldn't necessarily expect to see lots of reviews like in recent year or so. However, you would expect that given it is so popular and so highly rated, you would expect to see people talking about it, people using it in tutorials, people saying it's their holy grail. And I just haven't, I mean, let please let me know if you have, because I really haven't. I haven't seen anyone mention it. For those reasons, I was very intrigued. So I went and got Shea Match. They gave me a really good sample. This is a whole five mils, which if you think most foundations are 30 mils. I've used this like three or four times because I really wanted to get a really good idea of it and give it a really fair sort of review. So as always, I will put all the information about this foundation somewhere up here. For reference, I picked up the shade 24, which is beige vanilla. And just to let you know that the US has completely different shades to the UK. So that's nice and confusing. But so if we are foundation twins and you will find all my matches in the description bar, like always, then we are shade 24 beige vanilla in the UK, which is apparently the equivalent of the shade 230 buff W in the US. And that's according to the Temptalia uh, foundation matrix. So without further ado, let's whack it on my face and see what all this fuss is about. So before I try any foundation for review, I always use my MAC Prep and Prime um, Natural Radiance Primer or some something like that. I used to use the Stila. Just any primer that's kind of a, a standard basic primer for the foundation to go on, on top of easily without it affecting how the foundation looks too much. You can see it's really runny. Everything's starting to move down the tray. It's got a pretty faint smell. It's like that typical foundation sort of paint type smell, but quite light. Shade match is pretty spot on. So as I said, already even now it really looks like skin it's lots of luminosity at the moment but that may dry, dry down already soaked into my smile lines what's new there so yeah so far pretty good so i'm gonna go in now with my sigma f80 on this side and see how it applies with the brush So that was really quick. I'm not really seeing any brush strokes at all. I didn't have any problems with it going on with the brush. There's maybe ever so slightly more coverage, but not as much of a difference as you normally see between the sponge and the brush. And really evened out my skin tone. Can still see like my skin through and mark like beauty marks. Okay, so I've zoomed in and turned my lights down so that you can see how this looks on the skin. So this is the brush side and you can see it definitely still looks like skin. You can still actually see a bit of redness through. You can see beauty spots. So it's kind of like just about a medium for me, if that. Maybe more of a light, light to medium because you can still see some redness in this region. My nose is kind of looking a little bit cakey. It's settled right into my fine lines already. 
forehead looks okay, not the best, not the worst. Lots of luminosity right now, but let's see how it is once it's dried down. So I'm gonna go away, do the rest of my makeup, and then I will be back. Okay, so we are back and I have done the rest of my makeup. I did take a quick flash photo to see how it has dealt with the flash. I think it actually looks really good in the photos. I don't really see much of a white cast at all, if any. I really have enjoyed it. I've done a cream contour and a cream highlight today just to really test it. Nothing has moved, nothing has budged, nothing has gone strange, despite the fact that, as usual, I went in quite heavy-handed. Everything played really, really nicely. Concealer, everything. No, no colour change, as far as I can tell. Still looks like a really, really good match for me. So if we are foundation twins, Definitely a good shade, which is beige vanilla, although I hate the, the name. That just makes me sound like boring. But yeah, I'm really liking it. I think it looks really natural. I definitely say it's a medium coverage. I feel like some redness is poking through. You can definitely see my beauty spots. I have only set where I have concealer, so under my eye, nose, just between my brows, chin and top lip, so I have not powdered anywhere else. I have not used a setting spray so we can see how it lasts throughout the day by itself. So here is the starting point with the lights down and zoomed right in. Obviously this is highlight but it is still quite luminous on the skin. I have a matte bronzer on today so that's not what's giving me this luminosity. This is obviously highlight but the rest of it looking pretty good. It has soaked fully into my smile lines looking quite even but yeah quite a bit of redness showing through still so coverage isn't quite there for me it does very much look like skin forehead looks pretty good no problems with the lines on my forehead really they look pretty good not the best not the worst so I think at this point I'm just really on the fence we'll see maybe it's one of those foundations that in an hour or so will suddenly look really really beautiful I find that with the Fenty foundation, with the Huda foundation, lots of those foundations that just need time to sort of work with your skin to really start to look really beautiful. Yeah, at the moment I'm just kind of nonplussed. It, it looks fine, it looks pretty nice, but I'm not like, oh my God, my skin. I don't feel like that hype and that's kind of what I was expecting based on like the level of reviews and the amount of reviews that are like five stars, four and a half stars, four stars. I guess I was kind of expecting it to like immediately change my life, which it hasn't quite, hasn't quite changed my life. I feel like at the moment, yes, it's nice. Yes, it looks nice. Yes, it's a nice shade match. I'm not really having any issues with it, but I'm also not, I'm not blown away. So that's, that's my starting point. So my battery is going to last just long enough for me to tell you that we are coming up to quarter to 12. I'm going to give this the usual eight hours and then I will come back and we will see if I am obsessed, if I am getting the hype, if it has suddenly changed my life and I will never touch another foundation ever again. We will see. I'll see you in a few. Hi guys, so we are back and it is just coming up to 20 to 8. So I believe we were probably quite a bit over the eight hour mark because that was when I signed off and not when I finished putting my foundation on. So we're probably more like the eight and a half or even pushing nine hours at this point. So I've just been having a look in my mirror and I mean... I am still looking really luminous and I'm really seeing no fading on the like bulk of my face, like on my cheek area, on my forehead, although I am looking like fairly dewy, but remember I didn't set anything at all and I did use cream contour and things like that that tend to sometimes make me a little oily. I maybe look slightly oily either side of my nose and I don't have an oily skin type so this does seem to be a sort of more luminous foundation that probably will really benefit from being set with powder. There are a couple of things to note. So the first thing is that I had a busy day today and it was raining and um, lots of rain fell on my face as I was just running around town um, and I didn't notice any sort of marks or spotting or anything like that. It wasn't like torrential downpour but there was you know that sort of misty fine rain going on. Um, I will also say I was trying on clothes today and when I put my hoodie back on there was definitely some transfer going on just down here. Um, so it's definitely not transfer proof but it could have been worse. I am always really careful when I take it off but it's still obviously managed to touch it at some point and there's definitely quite a bit of foundation on the neck which is I really hate. The other thing whoop, to note is that I will zoom in to show you what I'm talking about. That 
As I was taking off one of the items, I sort of something made contact with my nose, either the top or my nail or something, and the foundation completely disappeared off of my nose. And you can see it's also really disappeared from here and all under my nose. I've kind of caked up around here and it is starting to break down on my chin. So as far as the general, this you know cheek area is pretty good from a distance looks pretty good forehead looks pretty good but yeah nose area really not good um even though that is an area that i did set with uh powder because obviously i used to conceal it there but i guess the majority of that is to do with the fact that i rubbed it so i yeah it's definitely not transfer proof put it that way so as far as my thoughts on this foundation i went to the doctor's earlier this afternoon, no illness or anything. I had a routine smear test. So just a reminder, get your smear test done. We are very, very lucky in the UK that we get them free on the NHS. So take advantage, get your smear test done. 30 seconds of slight discomfort, slight embarrassment could save your life. So that's just a side note. However, I went into the toilet before I had my appointment and I just looked in the mirror that was like, you know, three or four feet away and it looked stunning like the finish of this foundation I totally get what the fuss is about with the finish really just glowy and luminous and healthy but so skin like looks like nothing it's incredibly lightweight like it doesn't feel like I'm wearing foundation I totally get that I think it's very flattering on um, lines not so much texture but it's not the worst and I didn't use a smoothing primer so you know that could obviously improve my textured areas which is just around my chin so yeah there's a huge amount of good in it and again like I said given that we're coming up to probably around nine hour mark pretty good wear obviously not transfer proof which is a bugbear of mine but as far as the finish it really is beautiful crazily natural very luminous really um youthful looking that's what i kept thinking today is it looks listen it's like taking years off me that's kind of how i felt um yeah i i don't know i just am still not fully convinced i think partly because of the transfer because that is something i i just hate getting foundation on my clothes um, and partly because of what happened with my nose i like literally the fact that it fully disappeared off my nose because i slightly rubbed it and um, that is annoying but what I will say is that I have gone back over and, and read and read and read as many reviews as I could on the foundation to understand what people are obsessing about with it and what I kind of have concluded is that this is apparently oily skin dream foundation so massively recommend if you have oily skin to go and pick up a sample because they give really good sample sizes a whole five mils which is amazing give you like a week supply of foundation to really test it out on your skin because that's what i'm seeing in the comments there's lots and lots of oily skin type people saying this is my holy grail this is the best lasting foundation i've had, ever had on my oily skin so i think that is where that real miracle um foundation that people are saying is when they have oily skin type obviously i have normal skin type and um, i didn't set with powder but yeah i think it does look really really beautiful and i really love the finish and i think if if you weren't really close up and you couldn't see my nose then you would just think it looked absolutely flawless at the like nine hour mark with a busy day with rain with lots of really highly cranked central heating and all those kinds of things. I've been playing with my kids and rubbing faces and giving them loads of kisses. And again, it's still there on my chin. There's really very little fading on my actual face. Forehead looks good. It's literally just my nose. So yeah, I get it. I'm still just not 100% sure that I'm gonna run out and buy the full size. I don't know why there's just something holding me back, holding me back. I really hope you found this review helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe before you go. And please let me know in the comments if you have tried the Tainted All Ultra Wear Foundation because I'd love to know what everyone else's thoughts are and how you got on with it. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye, 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 bye.